sir. How many how many minutes can you allot to me, sir? Vice Chairman, sir. Dus minuut. Dus minuut. Dank u wel, meneer. So, honorable vice chairman, sir, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity you have given uh, to me. I, on behalf of uh, YSR Congress Party and my president, uh, Sri Vice Jagan Mohan Rigaru, I thank you and thank you very much, sir. Sir, I'll uh, I'll address only three issues because of the paucity of time which I consider, my party considers, are very important issues so far as GST is concerned, sir. The first issue is multiple tax rates. Sir, uh, GST council has recommended four-tier GST structure of 5%, 12%, 18%, and 28%. Sir, in fact, if, you, if, if we go back to the history, in 2015, December 2015, the expert committee that has been constituted on revenue neutrality rate on GST had suggested three different structures for GST. Sir, the committee also has noted, see the recommendations of the committee, while giving the recommendations, the committee has noted that 90% of the countries which have adopted this GST have opted only for a single rate structure. However, GST Council has uh, recommended four tax four four, uh, four tier tax structure, and further, this 13th Finance Commission in 2009 has recommended that their GST should be levied at a single rate of 12 percent. Sir, there is no problem with the multiple tax structure, but there is only one difficulty which I request the Government of India to take cognizance of. Sir, the difficulty in having the multiple tax rates is with reference to the classification of goods. Sir, while, while classifying the goods, there will be intense, I am really afraid, there will be intense lobbying from the various industries to accommodate them at the lower, lower, lower tax structure. This is, this is going to be a genuine difficulty which the government of India would be facing, sir. Sir, the another difficulty, for example, in Kerala, the coconut oil in Kerala is right now a tax at 5 percent, whereas in Uttar Pradesh it is taxed at 12.5 percent. How are we going to classify this? Uh, do, do, we, do we intend to bring it under 5 percent or 12 percent? See, in the light of the fact that there are different tax structures, the, the difficulty is that how to accommodate, how to classify each of the product into a slot of uh, 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 different tax, tax slots, sir. The next point which I would like to bring to the notice of the Honorable Finance Minister is the cascading effect. Sir, uh, under Clause 9, Subclause 2 of Central GST, Central CGST, crude oil, diesel, petrol and aviation turbine fuel. These four products, though the GST is applicable not with immediate effect, but with effect from the date that will be announced in the future. This is what class 9 and subclass 2 says. Sir, here the difficulty is, all other products other than these four, crude oil, aviation turbine fuel, diesel and petrol, apart from these four, kerosene, naphtha and all other petroleum products and petrochemical products also are covered under the GST with effect from the date that is after passing this act by the both houses of the parliament. Here, the, here is the difficulty, sir. Currently, the petroleum refineries are allowed to avail the input credit against the central taxes, central excise duty and service tax. Petroleum companies on an average claim about 59.48 percent according to the figures available from the petroleum ministry itself, sir. The input, uh, input tax credit that is being availed by the petroleum companies as of today is only 59.48 percent. The question that arises is, okay, what will happen to the remaining 40 percent? That's a question. The 40 percent which cannot be availed now is treated as a stranded cost. 
that's a that's a input car input input to tax benefit which which cannot be which is not being utilized by the petroleum companies this is right now the position sir sir according to the report by the national institute of public finance and policy keeping the petroleum products out of the purview of gst will lead to cascading of cascading of taxes worth 1.99 lakh crore sir this is what they have estimated sir in fact i have made a brief working as to what will be the cascading effect how to how to calculate the cascading effect according to the formula that is available see the cascading effect can be calculated like this sir total tax incidence minus direct tax incidence divided by final demand of the sector is equal into degree of the cascading of taxes sir in fact when we worked out the degree of cascading of taxes in respect of various sectors for example in the case of metallic minerals it is 1.4 it means 1 is to 1.4 the cascading effect the right now the cost of 1 rupee of mine metallic minerals after introduction of gst will be 1 rupee 40 paisa for every 1 rupee the increase incremental effect of the cost would be 1.4 here and after after the gst comes into force in respect of textiles it is 2.9 1 is to 2.9 means every for every 1 rupee the increase would be another 1.9 it means 2.9 but for the petroleum products the increase is really significant cascading effect is really significant it is 8.7 which is which is very high and it will it will have a uh, tremendous impact on the <coughs> petroleum products sir in the case of machinery and machinery tools it is 2.6 when i when i refer to 2.6 it is 1 is to 2.6 so it will be 2.2.6 times sir sir the third point which i would this is the last point sir i will not take much time the third point which i would like to bring to your notice is anti profiteering committee sir the objective of anti profiteering committee is see because the at every stage at every stage when the tax is gst is levied it is only levied on the value addition the 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 objective of prof, anti profiteering committee is to ensure that the tax is levied only on value addition and when it comes to the end use the seller of the product seller of the product will charge the gst only on the value addition at the end value value addition at the last stage therefore what will happen if uh, the final sell the seller who finally sells the product even though he avails the input tax credit charges the full full gst what will be the impact of that the impact of that would be the profitability there there could be some manufacturers there could be some uh, traders who will be who will be who, uh, who have got the intention of uh, uh, jacking up their profits making more money they may charge this full full gst even though they avail the input tax credit they'll claim in the books of accounts as if they have not they have, they have, they have not they have not utilized this input tax credit thereby the profits of the company would go up sir see ultimately what is the objective of the gst the objective of the gst is that the benefits under gst would be passed on to the consumer this is the objective see the, the see the why this anti profiteering committee is constituted is only for this reason to ensure that the benefits are being passed on to the end users this is this is the objective but sir in reality what is happening is sir in malaysia in 2015 when it was introduced even there also pro, anti profiteering committee was constituted but in reality what happened was there was a multiple litigation and eventually and there was there were some administrative difficulties to implement those uh, anti profiteering profiteering committee uh, therefore it has been abandoned so my point here is sir my humble submission to the honorable finance minister is to this committee should be carefully and guidelines for the committee should be carefully drafted guidelines should be carefully framed and the the powers that are vested with the committee should not be misused and the committee should perform its duties for which for which it is constituted sir i am thankful to you sir thank you very much for the opportunity you have given to me dr swa